Good morning, PCM family. This is Pastor Barrett Carter coming to you live from lovely Oxnard, California on this cold uh, Sunday uh, morning. I pray that everyone has had a wonderful week thus far and everybody's staying dry and safe and just being blessed. A um, couple of quick announcements. I know the announcements have gone, you know, looped for you, but we just want to encourage you guys to... Um, uh, if you're local, to come on out to church. We'd just love, love to see you. If you're not local, you know, we appreciate your support. We really and truly do. Um, at this time, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings. God is a cheerful giver. And I do want to thank all of the, all of the partners uh, that support the ministry that are watching. But just to let you know, this did, was brought to my attention by uh, someone that watches us on YouTube. We are currently doing, because things have been really difficult financially due to this COVID and trying to recover from that and trying to get more people back into the church, financially it's been somewhat of a strain for us. So what we've decided to do is do what is known as a safety net. And a safety net simply means that it's like an extra 10 or $15 a week. If you could just uh, use the Tidely app, and just put in on the very bottom, you'll find when you go to giving, just put um, it, where it's annotated, it says uh, safety net. And what that does is just putting money in the savings so we have something because we're almost bare. The cupboards are almost bare. So some of you have been doing that and we truly appreciate it. Now, I want to let you know, please don't take away from your tithes. Don't take away from the love offering for, for the pastor. And don't take away from the church that you may be a part of. This is something a little extra. If you can, it's a little sacrifice. If you, can, uh, if you can do it, God bless you. We really appreciate your support. It's called, it's called again, the safety net. And we're going to do it for six months. It's just uh, uh, $15 a month if you, if, if you can handle that. If you can't, $10 a month. I'm, I'm sorry, a week. Um, and that's going to kind of put us where we have some uh, food in the cupboard, so to speak. Amen? So, having said that... Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for those that are giving, and we pray that you bless them in a mighty way. We pray the monies that's received will be used in a way that we can continually help build your kingdom, Father. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I want to invite your attention to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17, and this is Paul speaking to the church. And I'm reading out of the NIV version, and it reads, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Let us pray. Father, I pray that as I break the bread of life that you will teach and preach mighty through me. And as you do this, those that are watching, those that are here, those that are listening, will be helped and be encouraged so that we can be the very best we can be for you. Father, we pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to teach a three-part series on the end of days. The end of days. The end times. Now, before I go any further, I want to make something emphatically clear so there's we're all one accord here. God laid this upon my heart to teach on this, and I do this not to scare anyone, not to work on anyone's emotions, but I do this because it's, in, it's incumbent upon you as a believer in Christ to be aware of what's going on. Uh, you begin to understand, if you haven't been following me for a while, you begin to understand why I've always said that things aren't going to get any better, they're going to get worse. And there are some who have an issue with that. They'll say, well, that's just being too negative. Well, it may sound negative, but it's what thus saith the Lord. It's the truth. So 
The whole purpose of this is so that you can learn and understand and grow and be prepared for what's going to happen. There's no stopping this. Understand that. You can be as positive as you want. And we ought to be positive as Christians because we need to look forward to this. Amen? So, having said that, the end of days. In the New Testament's 260 chapters of Christ's return is mentioned no less than 318 times. Jesus is coming back for his church. The word rapture, because you hear us talk about, you know, the, the believers, the saints are going to be raptured up in the clouds. The word rapture does not appear in the Bible. That's important to remember. It comes from the Latin word repair, which means seize, snatch, or take away. The term rapture is used to refer to the faithful believers being taken up to meet Christ in the air. Now, when the rapture takes place, there is some, there's some confusion. I, I, I want to clear this up because I think this is very, very important. We're in verse 16. I don't have it on the overhead, but by base text where it said, uh, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangels and with the trumpet call of God, it says, and the dead in Christ will rise first. What in the world does that mean? This is how it's going to happen. Stay with me. When Jesus comes back for his church, the Bible said that the believers in Christ will be raptured up, will be caught up. Right? Now, before those that are living, before they are caught up, those that are dead, that have been dead, <clears throat> their bodies will be caught up. Now, you got to remember something. I don't have this on the overhead, or I probably should have put it on there, but the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. So what happens when a person dies, and I'm talking to the believers now, when a Christian dies, their body stays here but their soul and their spirit goes up into heaven with the Lord. And the reason for this is this, this, this uh, flesh, this body, comes from dust. It's flawed. The body was not designed to be in heaven with God, so the body stays here. Now, some may say, well, wait a minute, what if a person is eaten by a shark, <laughs> by jaws, or blown up? or burned to death, or what have you. The Bible said that we all come from dust. What's going to happen is that, remember, when a, when a believer dies, like when you go to a funeral and, they, and you know that they're a Christian, their body is here, but their spirit and their soul is in heaven. And what's going to happen is their body is going to be reunited to their spirit and soul. However, the body is going to be a glorified body. A body that's prepared and made whole to, to reunite with the, with the uh, spirit and with the soul. Remember, the, 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 the triune man consists of mind, body, and soul. The spirit is the God that's within us. The soul is one's intellect, one's thinking and seeing. That's the soul. And it's going to be come together, and we're going to have what is known as a glorified body. Now, some people, what is a glorified body going to look like? I, I have no idea, but I know there's not going to be any flaws in it. It's been said that we're at our peak, at our very best, at age 27 to 28 years of age. So the experts say. But whatever it is, there's not going to be any flaws in the body. The glorified body is prepared for us. And this happens just like that so that we could be with the Lord again. This current body we have now is not designed for that. Now, let me break it down to you like this. For instance, you have people that are very good swimmers. 
They are people that can hold their breath for minutes at a time. But when you look at a fish, a fish can stay underwater indefinitely because that's how they were made. Humans, we weren't made to live underwater. I mean, it's kind of a corny analogy because if we stayed underwater, eventually we're going to do what? We're going to, we're going to drown because we're not made that way. Well, what am I saying? Our bodies were not created in a way where this current body can be up in heaven with the Lord. We're going to have a new body, a glorified body, a body without flaws. So I hope I cleared that up for you. So having said all of that, when Jesus comes back for his church, the dead in Christ, what is that? The bodies. That's their, their soul and spirit's already in heaven, but the body is going to be reunited with them, but the body is going to be a glorified body. And after that, those that are living when the rapture takes place will be caught up in heaven. Now, that's why I'm blown away when I hear some Christians talk about, I want to live to be 120 years old. You know, why the heck would you want to live to be that old? I'm praying for the rapture. Beam me up, Jesus. Jesus is coming back for his church. Period. There's no getting around it. And who is the church? It is your faith and your belief in Christ Jesus. Now, now that I've explained that to you, it's also important to understand that no one knows when Christ is coming for his church. Not even Christ himself, only the Father. The Bible tells us, you'll find on the overhead, that in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, Jesus says, no one knows about that day, talking about the rapture, or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So, only the Father in heaven knows. Now, let me, let me give you a little heads up here. Whenever you start hearing people talk about, well, Jesus is coming back on August 5th, 19, whatever, 2000, such and such, those are red flags. I remember when I was a kid, it was a big thing. They were saying that uh, the end of the world is going to happen in 1975, Some, something about 1975. Um, no one knows but the Father in heaven. Anytime you hear somebody talk, start talking that nonsense, those are red flags. Now, there are signs for things to come that, that will let us know that it's near, but no one, I mean, no one knows exactly when that's going to happen. But there will be signs. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 8. I think we have it here. Do I have it up there? I beg your pardon, I'm getting ahead of myself. Matthew chapter um, 24, verses 4 through 8. No, I guess I got that. Didn't get that one right here. Something went off. Bear with us, guys. A little technical glitch. It might have happened. Matthew 24, 4 through 8. Hang on. And it reads, I'll read, I'll read it to you. Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. I like how the King James Version says, the end is not yet. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. I, I, Paul, I don't have it on the overhead. I kind of messed up on that one myself there. These are the beginning of birth pains. These are the things that are going to happen. Period. Now, it's also important to understand that, uh, and, and again, I'm going to go in more detail about that, but the key is these things have happened forever, but it, the frequency of it is much, is, is greater. And the magnitude of it is much greater. 
But what's alarming is that there are a lot of people that are doing things that haven't any business doing what they're doing, and a lot of that's happening in the church. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Do we have that in there? 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's, let, let's, let's go with that. It says, The Spirit clearly says that in the later times, the latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Wow. L let me break this down just for a moment. When I became a believer many years ago, I was 12 years old when I accepted Christ, when I really start learning about uh, uh, eschatology or the end times and things that the events that are going to take place, when I, I would read this and it was taught, in my mind at that time, I kind of looked at it where there's going to be people that are going to leave the church and they're going to be caught up in these cults, these Jehovah Witnesses, the Mormons, uh, all these different cults that are out there. That's how I'm, I was looking at this. But what you have to understand, and, and that's the overt stuff, that's the obvious. The part that's tricky, and I've learned through the years, is that what's happening is that there are people that come to church on Sunday that talk about Jesus, but yet they incorporate things that are not of, that is not of God. Well, what am I talking about? You've got some people that are steadfast into prosperity. That's not of God. you got people uh, in, in the, I'm talking about the so-called so confessing Christians that are um, accepting things that is not of God. Living a lifestyle that's not of God. we find that there are many church leaders that they, they, they talk a good game, but yet they mix things up. They, they, their, their religion has become their God. And people are being deceived every which way in the church. But Jesus said, nothing shall prevail against the church, not even the gates of hell or Hades. But what's happening, there are people that come to church on Sunday morning that's being deceived. That's the part that's really tricky. And they think they're being helped, and they're not. And you'll find that they're families that are falling apart, children of disobedient to their children to a scale that we've never seen before. And these things are getting worse. And a lot of it has to do, now some of you will say, well, that's, that's terrible. There's some of you watching me right now. Now, don't cut off, don't, don't cut off the Facebook because if the truth hurts, so be it. it. I'm aiming for your heart, not your toes. Some of you have been so caught up in social media and the deception and the things that is going on in social media, you've lost your way. You talk about, oh, I love the Lord, the, the, the Holy Spirit, I got the Holy Spirit, I love God. But yet there are things that are going on that, yes, we talk about God, talk about Christ, but yet along with that nonsense, you incorporate stuff that has nothing to do with God. And what happens, you have reinforced this stuff in your brain, and, and, and then you're not living in the reality. You've got news networks that are saying things and doing things that, that, that makes no sense. But because you have allowed yourself to be so entangled in that stuff, you're not seeing the errors of it. Some of you are, are liberal. You know what? We all have our, we all have our, uh, our biases. But your liberalism have gotten to the point to where you even find areas that where it takes it to a whole nother area of liberal liberalism, which is absolutely insane. That's why we're having problems with our government leaders today. 
Yet you're talking about, well, we're going to church and we're going to do this and we, we need to have that, we need to have this. And, you know, what we're doing, we're doing right, we're doing this. And you're so far off track because that's all you watch and that's all you seem to get caught up in. And then what happens, you, get on, you go online and you, you, you read this stuff, you go to YouTube and all that kind of stuff, and those things have what they call algorithms and they feed into what you tend to watch. And you're not even living in a reality. Yet you're throwing God in it. Then then there's some of you, you're so far to the right. If, if it's not right enough, we, we, we want to find new, um, news networks that will take it even further, and you have lost your way. But yet you throw God in it, and that's the part that's sad. And some of you watching me right now, you're guilty of this. It's amazing. The years I've worked with the police department, you know, I come across people, particularly women, that have been abused by their husbands. I mean, beaten to a pulp. And they refuse to leave him. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why would you stay with someone that's beating you like this? Well, what happens when you are in a situation long enough, the craziness becomes normal in their minds when there's nothing normal about it. My point is you have got to be mindful of the things that you watch, the things that you listen to. When we read back at the time when Paul was uh, uh, preaching the gospel and, 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 and they, had, they had an organization called the Judaizers, and these Judaizers were those, they said they accepted Christ in their life as their personal savior. However, they were going around uh, spreading the news about, yes, yeah, we accept Jesus, but you've got to hold on to the, uh, the, the law. You can't let go of the law. And, and Paul referred to them as like serpents. And there are a lot of people that go to church guilty of this. You've got to be careful what you watch, what you listen to. That's how Satan is creeping in. That's why things have gotten to the point that's gotten so out of hand. In America, I look at what happened in January 6th. How in the world could something like that happen? In a country that's been blessed so much by God, and then you got government leaders trying to floss over. They don't want to talk about it. Let's talk about it because they're more concerned about power and about status than about the truth and about doing what is right in the eyes of God. And there are people that go to church every Sunday. You are guilty of this. And the time is going to come. You're going to have to answer to it. But the sad thing about it is you see, you don't see any wrong with what you're doing because you've allowed yourself to get so caught up in social media, so caught up in the craziness instead of getting caught up in Jesus, caught up in his word, not allowing that other outside stuff influence throw you off. And that is what is happening more and more and more. That's why you see the craziness going on in many churches today with many church leaders. I know this is not a very popular thing to talk about, but these are the end times and it's getting progressively worse. Jesus is coming back for his church. These are birth pains, the Bible refers to them. You'll find in, uh, did I already talk about that? The next slide, 24, 48, we already did that one, right? Yeah, all right, we're going to move on. Well, the first thing, and, and again, the Bible does refer to these as birth pains. What is a birth pain? A birth pain is when a woman goes into labor. I'm not a woman, obviously, but from my understanding, uh, when women go into labor, often they, they, get, they have like cramps, a sensation is very uncomfortable. It can be very painful. And she begins to go through those stages right before she's about to uh, uh, give birth. And she cannot wait till the baby is born. One, to be out of the pain. And two, a life in this world coming out of her. But before the baby's born, there's some pain that has to be endured. I'm being general here. What am I saying? 
before Jesus comes back for his church, there's going to be some pain. That's why I say it's not going to get any better. It gets worse. That's why it is essential. It is incumbent upon we as Christ. I say this all the time. That you have to, I'm not suggesting that you avoid yourself of all what goes on in, in, the, in society, but you have to be careful what you're listening to. You got to be careful with your bias. Are y'all with me on this? And some of God's people, you're not. You've been sucked into this. Satan is a prince of air, sound, color, and confusion. He's not just going to come at us overtly. Often it's covertly. He's sneaky with his stuff. And there are many of God's people who have fallen victim to this. But if you're listening to me, it just may make you feel uncomfortable. And don't talk about, well, I wish this person could hear what you're saying, Pastor. No, you need to hear it. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Let me, let me, let me, let me get off of that. The birth pains. Well, the end times warnings from Jesus. Let's talk about that. This is in your notes. The first thing that's going to happen in terms of the end times is many people will be deceived. Many people are going to be deceived. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 through 11. Okay. It says, uh, Jesus said, at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. We just talked about that one, right? That is happening in the church today, period. Don't get sucked into this. Well, I guess they said Jesus, so they must be good. You know, Satan believes in Jesus. Understand that. And there are people that will use Christ, uh, the church, as a front for their evil hidden agendas, much like the Pharisees when it came to God, not Christ, the Father in heaven, rather. Many are being deceived. The second point in terms of the end times warning from Christ is many people in the church will be misled. We've been talking about that. Matthew chapter 7, verses 22 and 23, it says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did you not prophesy in, in did you not prophesy in, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and, and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Wow. Here Jesus was talking about the so-called leaders that were doing what they were doing in the church. That should be very sobering to you. You think because a person can cast out demons, they must be holy. It's not necessarily, according to this, it's not necessarily the case. It could be, it could be a deceiving, it's, it's a deceiving spirit. You got some churches that are caught up in speaking in tongues. I mean, that's their main thing. They're, they're talking about, th but there, a lot of people don't know this, but there are other religions that they take up speaking in tongues. It's interesting to note that of all the gifts that we have, the only gift that can be imitated is the gift of tongues. And yet that's the most controversial. Now make no mistake about it, I do believe in the gift of tongues. I'll be clear about that. But I don't believe everybody has that gift. And I don't get hung up on tongues like a lot of so-called confessing Christians do. Amen, somebody. Okay. Many people in the church will be misled. And you got church leaders that are misleading a lot of people. That's why you have got to be very prayerful and it is so important for you to study God's word. Understand this, ladies and gentlemen, judgment starts first in the church. Not everybody in the church that goes to church, I should, I should say, is going to heaven. 
There are some people that come to church because it's just a habit. Some people get behind the pulpit and they preach, and a lot of them are phenomenal orators, but their hearts are far from God. There are some people that can heal people, miracles, but God never had his hand in it, according to his word right here. I know when I go to Africa, when I go to Ghana, that's one of the big things that the, the draw to some churches there is miracles. Miracles, miracles, miracles. And according to God's word, you get all the miracles you want. But if God is not in the forefront of, of it all, it's a deception. Amen. Let's recap it. We're going to tie this thing off here. I'm talking about the end of days and the end time warning from Christ. The first thing we talked about is many people will be deceived. A lot of people are going to be deceived. And I, 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 you know, in every facet of the way. And the thing I want to focus on is not just those that don't know Christ. Those that know Christ are going to be deceived. And I just explained to you the, why that's happening. Social media. What you're watching on a regular, constant basis. And I want to, be, before I go any further, I want to be clear about this. I don't want no one coming to me talking about Oh, you're taking sides with the with the with the uh, with the right wing, or you're taking sides with the left wing. I take no allegiance to any of them, because I thank God that He's given me the understanding to see what's actually happening. And what's frustrating to me is that some of uh, some of God's people who are mature in the Word are falling prey to this and should know better. But they have this appetite of, I've got to, I just got to satisfy my bias. We're not talking about bias for Christ. I'm against a whole lot of stuff that's not right. And I have no problem talking about them. But I also talk about the things that are good. But I don't sit here talking about the things, if you got one side uh, doing one thing that's fantastic, and then turn around and do something absolutely crazy, and I'm... You can, you can hear a mouse pee on cotton. No. I'm going to call a spade a spade. My allegiance is to Christ. I thank God I've not allowed my bias to overwhelm my intellect to where I'm living in a whole different reality. And this is not, and don't think for one New York second that this is, uh, can only happen to people that are not educated. There are people that are highly educated uh, but being deceived and don't know it. Amen. All right. Next point was many people in the church <clears throat> will be misled. We talked about that. You got to be careful what you're listening to or who you're listening to. And last but not least, these are the sequences of events that will intensify. And we're going to talk more about them next, next week. The first thing is wars and rumors of wars. It's going to get worse. Never have their man have had the capability to destroy this earth a hundred times over with nuclear weapons. Never before. Wars and rumors of wars. Then nations will rise against nations. We're seeing that. It's happening more and more and more. And why is this happening? I got to say this, man. This is, this is mind-blowing to me. I've been keeping up with the incident, the problems that are happening in Russia and Ukraine and China. And I, I can't for the life of me when I see a person that, that is, just goes and invades some, uh, another land because, you know, and then you got people that are dying like flies, it, it, it's mind-boggling to me. And what even made it worse, if you watch the news, Putin is in there making a speech and you got one of the church leaders sitting in the front row. <laughs> I don't know if it's a cardinal bishop. I'm not sure what he was. Because 
Russia, and I'm just blow, throwing this out here, how Satan works, because we know what Putin is doing is not of God. He threw out this thing about uh, homosexuality, uh, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, he's right on that one. Boom. But they forget about all the other stuff that he's doing. That's exactly what we do right here in America. You're so focused on, yeah, that lifestyle, whether whatever it might, might be, that's terrible. You're right. They're trying to take, put the church under, but then they turn right around and they do something totally different that's contrary and will not say a word. And in some cases, even try to justify it. Well, you know, God has his hand in it. Mm. Wars and rumors of wars, nations will rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, famines and earthquakes in various places. Again, this stuff has been going on for a while, but never to the, to the magnitude it has been going on. It's getting worse and worse and worse. There was an earthquake in New York, small one, and the frequencies of these so-called earthquakes has increased tenfold. The weather is changing. Things are just getting, I'm not going to get into this uh, global warming. I'm not going, I ain't going to get into that. I don't know enough about it. But something's happening where the weather has gotten weirder and weirder. You've got to agree with that. As I close out here, I want to say this, and we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to continue this next week until about the end of days. We're living in the end times. No one knows the day or the hour but the Father in heaven. But we are definitely living in the birth pains. And when I say things are going to get worse, they're going to get worse. What I want to make, and I got to say this, and I say this all the time, the ship is going down. There's no stopping this. You can rearrange the furniture all you want. It's all going down. But the only thing we as Christians can do is be on the life raft of salvation and pull as many people out of the shark, sinful waters as we possibly can. That's all we can do. And I want to be clear. I'm not suggesting that we stick our head in the sand, uh, la, 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 la. No. We have to use wisdom and common sense. And we have to be prayerful and ask God to lead us and not to allow ourselves to get sucked into things that we shouldn't be sucked into. And again, I want to say this. Some of y'all should know better. But you're being told, so you're without excuse. The end of days. The time is coming. Jesus is coming back for his church. Amen? Amen. At this time, I want to ask if there's anybody that's watching me, listening to me, that you've never accepted Christ in your life. You want to do that because if you want, to, if, the, if the rapture comes today, are you going to be in the rapture or are you going to be left behind? We're going to talk about that next week. If you've, accept, if you've never accepted Christ in your life as you, and you want to do that, I want you to pray this prayer with me. For the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised it from the dead, you shall be saved. The Bible tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for who should ever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you want to become a believer in Christ, a Christian, I want you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner and I've fallen short. Come into my heart, come into my life and have me to be the person you intended for me to be. I believe with all my heart that your son Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the dead for me. Heavenly Father, I believe with all my heart that you love me. So forgive me of all the wrong I've ever done and guide me. I love you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If you said that prayer, your name has been written in a book of life. Praise God. The next thing you want to do, you don't want to just stop there. You want to keep going. The next thing you want to do is make sure you get your good study Bible. We use the NIV version, but get a good study Bible. And um, you, I would suggest you start reading in the Gospel of John. That's a good place to start. The next thing you want to do is find you a good church uh, that you could be a part of. 
and um, that you feel comfortable, a Bible teaching church. And if you have any questions about, you know, well, what, what do you think about this church? A church where you feel comfortable, where you're going to learn, but not a church you're going to go to and you're always getting fed candy. You want to go to, figuratively speaking, you want to go to a church where you're going to be encouraged and you want to be challenged so that you can be the best you can be. The next thing you want to do is, you never, if you've never been baptized, get baptized. Amen? If you were baptized when you were a kid, you really didn't understand what it was about. Get baptized. Now, being baptized doesn't get you saved. You've already done that. Being baptized is an outward expression of an inward conviction and feeling. Amen? Amen. Listen, I hope what I shared with you today, I know it was hardcore, but somebody got to preach it. And I hope what I share with you will be planted deep in your hearts and that we'll all take heed to it so that we can be the very best we can be in these perilous times in which we live. So without further ado, let me close it out in prayer. I'm going to let you go. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the message that was given. We thank you for those that have given their lives to you, Father. Now we pray as we go and leave, uh, go our separate ways that you be with us. Guide us and strengthen us. Protect us. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next Sunday, may God richly bless you and yours.